I'm going to go grab my glasses. I'll be right back. <laughs> And Dr. Ross, we have uh, Brian here who's helping take attendance. He's CPD staff. He's, um, I know Sung was in that role previously, but he's helping out tonight. Okay, thank you. Just if everyone's wondering who Brandon is, or Brian is. All right, it looks like it is 5.30. Are you guys good with us getting started? All right, well, it is 5.30, January 19th, and just want to say welcome to everyone. Happy New Year. It's been a while since uh, we've had the opportunity to... Uh, convene and, and be with each other. I hope your holiday season went well. I hope everybody is, is healthy. Um, hopefully you all know the Colorado rules and you haven't given in and taken down your Christmas uh, decorations yet. You know, this is Colorado. We don't take down Christmas decorations till after the stock show. So hopefully you're still hanging in there tight um, and you still got your stuff up. Um, but if not, that's okay too. Anyways, again, Happy New Year's. Good to see everybody. Um, we are going to be together tonight for about an hour. Um, and this meeting is, is really a meeting to kind of launch our work and level set and, and get us moving um, in, a, in our direction for, for 2022 as we begin to, to do this work. And so um, tonight we... We'll be together for about an hour, like I said. Um, we're gonna hear from uh, Laura uh, and, and Happy, um, the executives over parks and recreation. Um, we're gonna hear a presentation or just get an overview on the steering committee vision and planning um, from the city. I'm gonna take a few minutes to just kind of talk about and remind us of our roles and responsibilities moving forward, just because we, we are shifting and focusing on uh, some new stuff. And then as all always we will have ready. And as you remember, it's our uh, two minutes each. And so we'll, we will, do that and then we will wrap up and just uh, kind of talk about our next meeting, which is February 9th uh, at 5.30 and we'll be meeting via Zoom and, and I'll remind everyone of that um, when we get to that point in the meeting. So um, like as always, if there are any questions, uh, you need any clarification, don't hesitate to reach out to me, you can shoot me an email, you can shoot Courtney an email um, and we'll make sure we get any questions answered. So with that being said, um, I'd like to turn it over to Laura to get us kicked off this, this evening. All right. Well, thank you, Dr. Ross. And uh, I want to thank everybody for attending this evening. Uh, just a reminder, if you don't know me, my name is Laura Aldrete. I'm the Executive Director of Community Planning and Development in the City of Denver. Um, I, I believe Happy had a conflict um, with another meeting, um, and so I'm not sure. Oh, you are, okay, terrific. So happy, I'll start and then hand it over to you. Um, 
you know, given that this is about community engagement and, and a building community and neighborhoods uh, and parks uh, as a centerpiece, uh, Cappy and I really, our departments co-lead this effort. Uh, and so both wanna, I think, take a minute to thank everyone for their commitment um, and helping, helping us uh, see your vision for your community uh, into the future. So um, <clears throat> it's, uh, it, you know, it's not easy to always pull away from the demands of life and talk about city planning. Um, so I, again, just appreciate the time um, and your passion and your expertise, uh, knowing your community uh, so, so deeply. Uh, we are here because we love Denver, not you know, both the neighborhood scale and the city scale. Um, and it's, it's what makes our community thrive and our city thrive. And <clears throat> we're coming out of last year where we asked the question of, should Park Hill Golf Course land remain exclusively a golf course? Um, and your work was so instrumental in, in helping to answer that question um, that's fundamental for how, you know, whether or not we were, should move forward or not, or how we should move forward. And it, as you know, what we heard across all forms of our community input was uh, including the your recommendations, the survey results, the community navigators outreach, was that there was uh, very little support for keeping only a golf course. And this steering committee in particular met eight times last year, navigated through some tough conversations uh, from Park Hill's history to the area's unique needs today. Uh, and I just want to thank you again for your insights during that visioning process, the recommendations of this committee, combined with the input from area residents through the other uh, outlets of community engagement, identified several areas where people have shared value. Um, and I think that term shared value is so incredibly important for us to remember and to go back to uh, as we move through this, this next process. So. Courtney uh, will detail each of those areas in a, in a moment, but, but something that, um, that I think is really important um, is that common ground that we'll find, uh, that, that we have, that you all have found as a community, right? I, one of the things I love about being part of Denver is that um, all, you know, I'm not exactly the same as all my neighbors and I don't want my neighbors to be exactly the same. And so looking for, common ground, shared value is really where our strength uh, can come from and, and moving forward with that. And last year really demonstrated that with the work that this community uh, committee produced um, and will continue to guide the city's thinking around Park Hill uh, Golf Course uh, as we move forward. Uh, and, and so I just wanna talk about what's, so what's next, right? You've, you've been with us for a year, or I should say we've been with you for a year. Um, uh, and um, this year, we really want to focus on collectively refining the prevailing vision into a coordinated park framework and area plan for the for the property um, within the Park Hill Golf Course um, uh, space. And it'll include detailing park size, location, considerations for future parks and open spaces, along with making more detailed land use recommendations to implement priorities around housing food access, business support, uh, and, and other elements that were mentioned as a part through that, those community, that community feedback. Um, and the work of this committee is, is to really help get those details and your voices and perspectives are gonna be extremely important in laying out that framework and getting to a level of detail where you feel comfortable, uh, you know, at to, that the vision that you see um, can have a guidance to move forward. Um, so this committee will also help guide the broader outreach work uh, to make sure we're moving forward in a thoughtful, transparent way uh, that continues to include community input uh, at the right touch points. An important piece of moving forward is, is gonna be having that common understanding of what the conservation uh, easement and the November's ballot results mean for this process. Um, so, the easement, just to be clear, the easement is still very much in place uh, and use of the property is still, to, as of today, limited to golf-related purposes. 
So from the beginning, the city's position has been that we would not propose any kind of change to the easement until we had a framework in place, informed and shaped by the community, the neighborhoods closest to the golf course. Uh, and, and this is the beginning of that. The ballot initiative reinforces that objective, right? Because the work that you do this year will help build that framework and that area plan so that the city leaders, um, city council, and ultimately Denver voters have the information that they need to consider what the future of this property should be. So there, there will be uh, continue to be a lot of attention on this project uh, and the work that this group does. And there's gonna be a lot of information out in the community as well as hearsay about what may or may not happen. Um, and, and I want you to hear it from me that, that your voice matters. Uh, and I say this often in community meetings, but it's not the loudest voice. Uh, we have to listen to everyone's voice, right? And, and um, all voices matter. So your input um, will be incredibly important to define uh, and design the park space uh, and then the areas around it and guiding the area plan. So city staff will stay focused on honoring your time and making sure these sessions are productive with um, constructive dialogue. Uh, just like last year, we're, we're not gonna shy away from these hard questions. Um, that is part of what we, part of what community is, right? It's not always um, flowers and easy, easy answers. Um, and those tough conversations are really important. Uh, but, um, but we will stay focused on detailing the shared priorities uh, from the prevailing vision that you all established uh, through last year's work and, and was supported through the various other community navigators and surveys that we conducted as well. Uh, before I wrap up, I just also want to take a moment to welcome um, some new members who are joining us tonight. As you recall, we asked everyone, I think, uh, before the holidays and then followed up after the holidays, uh, just wanted to confirm with everybody on the committee last year if they wanted to continue, uh, and a few people were unable to do so. Um, but our objective is to keep a committee of diverse perspectives. So. Um, so as much as possible, right? We, we, have to, we have tried to fill those seats with someone who shares that focus. So um, just to touch on a few folks, Evelyn Barnes had to step down from the committee uh, and Roger Cobb was joining us to present, um, to represent the Northeast Park Hill Coalition. Um, so I'm not sure how to see if Roger's yeah, he's here. on. Okay, there. thanks. Yep, All right. he waved. Okay, thanks, I'm not, I'm just not seeing the whole all the Brady Bunch. Um, and then Pete Marzik replaces Melody Polidori Harris to bring that local uh, business perspective. So Pete, if you're here, you wanna say hi or wave? Hello, thank you for having me. I'm excited. We, we're, we're, we're excited to have this thing take shape. Right, thank you, Pete. Um, we'll continue to be thoughtful about um, replacements. If anything one else, if there's other um, seats that become available um, and or folks need to step back from this work. Um, and, you know, just again, want to recognize um, as I can smell my dinner heating up on the stove downstairs that um, I, I get this is this is your family time, dinner time, um, time that you've been able to step um, step aside uh, from work and uh, and and you're you're dedicating it to your community. So I want to thank you for that. I'll turn it back over to Dr. Ross uh, and Courtney and I'll stay on. I might go um, check my dinner, but I'll, I'll be on for the remainder of this meeting. So thank you all. Thank you. Happy, did you have anything to add? Sure, uh, just, just very briefly, I, I, you know, um, uh, what she said uh, about this process moving forward and, and we're, we're so um, grateful to you for committing your time, um, you know, as a, as a resident, of North Park Hill and as the head of Parks and Recreation, I, I was uh, extremely gratified uh, to see and hear the community, how, how much the community valued uh, parks and open space uh, as an important part, a significant part uh, of, of this site uh, moving forward. Um, and we're really looking forward to 
diving into a little bit more detail and, 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 and really shaping that vision you have for uh, how parks and open space um, really help to, to build community. And, and I will say that, um, you know, parks don't exist in a vacuum. Um, they're not the place over there and, and they are an integral part of our communities if they're done well and they're, and they're right. Um, they're very much a part of the, uh, the infrastructure of every community. Uh, and so um, that, that's the sense I got from listening to uh, the views and reading the, the results of the survey before that, that um, people in our community care deeply about how parks and open space relate directly to their lives uh, and to the lives of their families. And uh, so we have a really uh, a unique opportunity to, you know, to, to sort of build that vision uh, for this site uh, and, and make it, uh, you know, draw from great examples from around the city and around the country. Um, and, you know, just to, you know, we, we may not be able to do everything but uh, I, I think we can make something really special uh, happen there. And so um, my team uh, at Parks and Recreation is really excited to, um, you know, to um, move forward with this planning with all of you and hear your thoughts and views and um, how, how you see um, the open spaces and the parks uh, developing in this area. So thank you, Dr. Ross, and thanks to all of you for your time. Thank you. Thank you, Happy. And thank you, Laura, for, for the update and the remarks. Um, we're going to move right. We keep moving and we're going to move over to uh, Courtney. Um, yes, Courtney, you're up. Oh, great. See here. Get this moving. Um, so thanks, Dr. Ross. Thank you, Laura and Happy. Um, tonight I'm going to talk about uh, the process to date and how we got here and give a high level overview of the context of long range planning in Denver uh, and how they form a foundation and framework for small area plans, like what we're embarking on with the Park Hill uh, Golf Course. I'll, go, uh, I'll then go into where we are in the Park Hill Golf Course plan process today and moving forward. So we started in last January with a visiting process engaging residents in a multifaceted community engagement process that focused on shared priorities for the Park Hill Golf Course site, listening to what the community needs and wants were um, for the area. Uh, early in the process, we assessed existing conditions for the area, including demographics, infrastructure, local economy, and existing parks, um, open spaces, and environmental aspects in those studies. Uh, and those studies are still available on the project webpage. Um, I'd encourage you all to re-review them again uh, as we continue to move forward. Um, through the process, we gather community input via surveys, community navigators, two public meetings, uh, general public comments, and through what we heard uh, from you guys, the steering committee. Um, we had thousands upon thousands of touch points and inputs from the community and coalesced and synthesized them. Uh, as detailed in the prevailing uh, vision document. Um, and this prevailing vision document was created from all this input that we heard from you. Uh, that prevailing vision document, in case uh, you haven't had a chance to look over that, is on the website and the website is on this slide. Um, so with the prevailing vision, out of all the ways we heard from the community, uh, there was clear support to explore future use for this property that focuses on one or more large parks uh, and a mix of uses too. Uh, there were eight shared priorities that received the most support from area residents during the process. We heard that creating one or more significantly sized parks uh, and other community gathering places uh, for the site was uh, clearly very important. Um, there was also a desire to ensure accountability uh, for the property and ongoing engagement of the area residents through an oversight board uh, that would continue building uh, community capacity as the plan uh, progresses and is implemented. Uh, we will continue to, to discuss during the plan process what that looks like, how much, uh, and how we can build a community capacity in this community to ensure that the plan is authentically implemented uh, and explore various regulatory tools and commitments. Another shared priority uh, 
we heard across the board was the need to improve environmental and community health. We understand that trees and the ecosystem services they provide, mitigating heat, stormwater filtration, cleaning the air, um, you know, needs to be prioritized. Uh, and, um, you know, with the alternatives development and draft recommendations. Youth and community recreation was a priority for many who live closest to the property um, and across the broader community. Uh, and Denver Parks and Recreation is and will continue to be uh, fully engaged with the plan as we work on those strategies and recommendations. Uh, next, affordable housing uh, is a need for the community. And more specifically, there was clear support from uh, many area residents for this site to include a variety of income restricted units. That's what we mean by affordable housing, income restricted units, uh, not just uh, for rent, but also um, ownership opportunities. Another shared priority was uh, to include some community serving commercial on the site, like a grocery store and other ways to access fresh, healthy food as well as ensuring space for local business and business owned by people of color. Um, so they have a place at the, the future site. And uh, during the plan, uh, we'll explore a framework of how, where, how much, and strategies to implement those shared priority recommendations. Uh, additionally, we heard from the community uh, concerns regarding involuntary displacement, that sometimes accompanies a community when um, there's investment in areas. Uh, shared priority in the plan will be focusing on including strategies that help current residents stay in place um, in the area and possibly bring home some of those who were previously displaced from Park Hill and the surrounding neighborhoods. Uh, so with those shared priorities, we understand that the prevailing vision for the site includes uh, one or more large parks and open spaces and a mix of uses. And we're moving into a planning phase where we'll develop and refine alternatives for the site and a draft plan that includes strategies uh, that achieve the vision's shared priorities. Uh, but we'll need to take a step back uh, really quickly, you know, shifting gears here, on how the Park Hill Golf Course uh, area plan fits in uh, to and relates with um, the other city adopted plans, starting with the city's large overarching plan, the Compre Comprehensive Plan 2040. Uh, Comp Plan 2040 was adopted by city council in 2019 and is the 20 year vision for Denver and its people. Uh, it's reflecting the voice of thousands who shared their hopes, concerns, needs and dreams for Denver as it continues to evolve. Um, there are six main elements of the comp plan vision it is symbolized here at the circles at the top. Uh, an equitable, affordable and inclusive Denver, strong and authentic neighborhoods, connected, safe and accessible places, uh, a community that is economically diverse and vibrant while being environmentally resilient uh, and um, a healthy and active city. A suite of citywide plans advance the vision elements of a comp plan such as Blueprint Denver. Small area plans like the um, Park Hill Golf Course area plan continue to advance the citywide vision but provide more specific guidance tailored to a small section of the city. Answer Drew on text. Laura, you're on. Laura, hey, Laura, you're on. <laughs> I'm well, a little, little uh, interference there, but I'm going to keep going. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about Blueprint Denver. Um, you know, as we mentioned, Blueprint Denver is the, the city's land use and transportation vision for the next 20 years. Um, and it articulates how to achieve this vision equitably through the implementation of complete neighborhoods and transportation networks. Blueprint Denver establishes a framework to plan uh, and implement complete neighborhoods. So you'll see here, there's, there's basically three interrelated elements make up the, the main component of a complete neighborhood. Land use and built form, mobility, and quality of life infrastructure. That parks and all those things that uh, make places great. Um, you know, Things to help make uh, neighborhoods complete, like diverse housing options, how a place looks and feels, walkable streets, parks and open spaces, uh, and convenient services all fall under these um, complete uh, neighborhood elements. 
Uh, Blue Prince Denver is an important piece of the puzzle as Parks Hill Golf Course Area Plan will provide an opportunity to refine Blue Prince Denver's recommendations for their uh, area, including changes to Blue Prince future places map and street types. Uh, and while Denver aspires to be a city of complete neighborhoods, it does not mean that things are static and everything is the same. Other parts of the neighborhood, like 40s in Colorado, will continue to evolve over time as well. Uh, so with the Park Hill Golf Course Area Plan, we're not starting from scratch. We'll continue to build upon all the work we've, uh, we've done during the visioning process and everything we've heard from the community. Uh, over the next few months, we'll develop and refine alternatives for the site that align with the eight shared priorities, including a framework that details amounts, locations, and considerations for future parks and open spaces on the site uh, and other uses. Moving forward, we'll continue to refine recommendations and strategies to implement the shared priorities in that visioning process. And you see with the arrow, we're right here. Um, so additionally, this work will continue to include community engagement at every step. Uh, we'll continue hopefully working with Denver Metro Community Impact to hear from those voices that we typically uh, you know, don't hear from in processes like this. Uh, folks like youth, the Latinx me, African American, and renters uh, to get their input as we refine alternatives and recommendations. We'll provide opportunities for the broader public to engage through uh, at least three or more community meetings and workshops, pop up events, office hours, online commenting. Um, we'll have another survey, both mailed uh, to households within a mile of the Park Hill Golf Course and uh, available online for the broader community to weigh in on. Uh, and the steering committee meetings will continue monthly. Uh, they'll allow for that continuous feedback loop, driving plan content and outcomes. So there'll be multiple ways and multiple avenues that the community continue to weigh in on this plan content as we move forward. Um, so with that, that's the, the high level overview. And uh, Dr. Ross, if we wanna um, pause a bit for, for any questions, um, that would be fine too. But thank you. Yep, thank you. Um, from our steering committee members, um, do we have any questions for Courtney? And um, I have a quick question. Okay. Uh, the community-wide workshops, would they be online or in person? Um, honestly, right now, I think what we'll, we'll, we'll have to play that by ear. It's going to depend on um, just kind of where we are with COVID and Omicron and, and all those kinds of things. Um, you know, if we have an opportunity uh, to do some stuff in person, um, personally, I'd like to take advantage of that, especially when we're engaging the larger community, but we'll just kind of have to see where we are at that time when we get there. Do you have a thought or a preference on that? Uh, me specifically? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think we should have a, a mixture of both because certain people are, you know, not as tech savvy. So in-person mm -hmm. meetings are better. And, you know, it also, there's, you, you can engage a lot more people if you do online. So there are definitely mm -hmm. benefits on both sides. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mohammed. Drew, I see your hand. Um, hello, good evening, everybody. This is uh, Drew Dutcher from Elyria Swansea. Um, I, I apologize, I was a few minutes late, so maybe I missed something. Um, but I asked the question, uh, you eliminated the seat for Save Open Space Denver. And at the same time, you say you want a diversity of opinions. And I, I'm sorry if I missed the explanation, but could you explain why you eliminated this seat and you're narrowing this discussion by uh, excluding a discussion of, of, of open space as they would advocate for it? Can someone please explain sure. that to me? Hey, hey, Drew, it's Laura Aldrete. Um, good, to, good to hear from you. And I would just um, populate it. So I had to check, uh, I had to check um, that my dinner wasn't burning. So I just ran back and um, answered your question in the chat, but just to um, verbalize it. So right in the, in the um, prevailing vision conversation, the question was, should there be 
uh, you know, only golf course park open space, or should it be something else, maybe inclusive of park and other things? And so for that conversation, uh, SOS was a really important part of that conversation. Um, the prevailing vision did, did come about that, that people wanted park and other types of development, you know, affordable housing, access to um, fresh food, small business support, uh, or, or places for small business, local businesses to be. Um, and so they, they continue to be uh, opposed to that position, to the prevailing vision. And so I think it, that's a mischaracterization, so Laura, it doesn't but I'll let you that. finish. Sorry, but Drew. I think you mischaracterized. Hold on just hey, a Drew, second. Drew, Drew, Drew let's, let, let's second. let your question be answered. Yeah, let okay. me just finish answering. And then, and then uh, you know, I, I'm not sure where the time for this, uh, or, yeah, wh wherever this dialogue goes. But um, right, so they're in a new... Um, we, we are in a new space. This committee is in a new space where the prevailing way, the prevailing vision has set the um, vision, right? And the vision is that from the communities, over 70% has said, we want a large park and we want to look at housing and we want to look at opportunities for our community to have access to fresh food. And we want opportunities for local small businesses to be able to exist and stay within this community. And that is the direction this, that this next effort is going. There will be all, like we did in the previous uh, um, iteration, right? Where we use lots of different methodologies to access um, community voices, whether it was um, specifically around the, the Park Hill Golf Course or the community at large, when we had the online survey, we'll continue to have um, different uh, types. Like, and I suggested here, like maybe a focus group that's gonna be very specific on open space and, and what the design of that park and where it should be, that, that significant park space. Um, and then I think that's a great conversation for, for a group that is very focused, very specifically focused on open space to participate in that um, very specific uh, bucket. But this conversation that we're entering now is much larger than that. Um, and and uh, it just, it wasn't appropriate to have them continue. Um, Laura, just a, a response. I, I think you've mischaracterized this uh, very badly, and I don't think you've opened the discussion. You've narrowed it, and I don't know where your 70% figure comes from, but I know we need to move on, but I'm just sorry that we're starting off on a really a very yeah. deceptive foot. Yeah, yeah. and I'm so sorry I, that's happening. Yeah, I would, I would respectfully disagree with you, Drew, and, and maybe we can discuss this offline to uh, I can certainly get to you the, the data points on the 70%. Great. I would like to see that. Thank you. Right. Right. Thank, thank you, Drew. And uh, we're going we're gonna to move over to Patty. Uh, Patty, do you have your hand up? Yes. I just wanted okay. to make sure that it was in this year's a priority to really try to make this more inclusive and make, make sure that everything is bilingual in Spanish and English since I feel like in last year we kind of miss the mark at the beginning. So I just wanted to make sure that all of this, the community navigators, the mail online surveys, et cetera, it's reaching the Hispanic community. That's a great comment, Patty. Yep, agreed. And we did have the um, prevailing vision translated and available in both English and Spanish too. So um, we'll continue that work in uh, work hard to can make it accessible to all. All right, we've got time for one more question, if there is one. Checking my screen, make sure I don't miss anybody. Okay, seeing that we're going to keep on moving. Um, so I think I'm David gonna... has his, David okay. Martin has his hand up. Sorry, David, I, I didn't see you on my screen. David? That's because I waited until the very last minute because I didn't want to take somebody else's opportunity to ask the question away. So because oh, I don't okay. think mine is my mine is a supreme type question, but I, I did post it in the chat and I, I it really I don't if if they want to take it offline that's perfectly fine um, and I'm happy to talk about it offline with multiple people um, because I really do want to understand how this prevailing vision which when I think of the word prevailing it means it's like the overarching just 
everybody's in agreement. It's the most supreme thing ever that, that is, you know, that has the most appeal. And it, it just, I'm curious how that got quantified. You know, it's like we, we ended our last sessions and I know this is a different session now, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this all pans out. But um, we ended our last sessions essentially with two visions. So I, I'm curious how this prevailing thing came out of two visions when one vision was all open space and the other vision was more mixed use. So I, I, it's like I said, I, I, I'm happy to, to have the answers come in any way they, they want them to, but I just would like to know how that was quantified. I, I just would like, how did they come up with the prevailing vision? So. Right. Well, so, so Dr. Ross, um, would you like to speak to that? Um, because you crafted that uh, from hearing the different uh, presentations, crafted that document on behalf of this committee and then handed it to the city. The, yeah. And I think the prevailing vision is talking about the city's document where we coalesce all the input versus the steering committee's vision. That's one input, right? Right. So uh, we'll do so. Do we'll do two things here. I'll I'll respond to to what I can, and then Laura, if it's okay, I'll I'll reach out to you offline and see if uh, there's a another venue where we can, if there's additional questions that we can get sent to you and you can answer. But uh, to Courtney's point, right? This the this this committee uh, as we worked together last fall was one input of several different ways that the community was engaged with. Um, and so all those things were taking into to consideration to create whatever the, the to create this prevailing um, vision that the city created. From our perspective, um, the reality was we had more people on the committee who were interested in um, the mixed use or more than just open space than we did people who were interested in, in open space. And so what we did was, or uh, what I did was we took all that information, we presented all of that. There, there, there was not consensus and you know, the, the, uh, the document shared that, but what, we, but what there was, was there was agreement around certain things um, in, in each aspect, right? So, um, and so what we did was we shared the two visions and then we also shared where there was, where, where there was similarity and overlap and so that's where we that's where we are and that's how we how we got there and so i will work offline and just follow up with you guys um if there are additional questions um um hey, and, dr and, ross and get those questions just, answered. the one the one point um that i think would be helpful to clarify is i i believe the term prevailing vision refers to um not consensus but you know, majority or more than not right. uh, perspective. And I think that's really important because David, I think you, your description of prevailing vision was like, this is it, this is what everybody believes. And I, I, which I tried to hint at earlier, like one of the great things about living in a city is that you're not gonna always agree with your neighbor, but you come together around common themes around, um, that, that um, hold you together and you work on those elements um, to move forward. And so I hope you don't think that in your community, you're gonna get a consensus because I, I just, I don't think that's the neighbor, those are the neighborhoods we choose to live in. Um, and so we never had the impression that we would have 100% of one opinion because we live in a diverse, because we're hopefully living in a diverse urban community and there's we have to hear everybody's voices and um and focus on where where we've got common ground thank you Laura. i'll say thank, i'll quickly say thank you for that um it, it helps answer some of it helps frame it um but but like i said i'd really like to understand more about what quantified the prevailing vision what was there a weighted yeah. kind of analysis done was there you know all that stuff like i said i'll, yeah. I'll shut now they continue on so we got a lot to do so yeah like said, not to, i was not combative i'm not trying yeah, to and, and i think my staff can follow up on those percentage points and provide specific data points for you to to craft that um yeah. to, to help explain that yeah just, just to keep us moving on just is that is that what you want me to do dr ross you want me yeah to that'd be great okay. and okay. then um, and then there's some comments or questions in the comments and just just so I make sure that they're captured 
and captured correctly, uh, shoot those to me via email as well. So we, you know, so I make sure I have those and, and they don't get lost um, in, in, in the comment zone or anything like that. And I want to make sure that, you know, we're at, you're answering, you're asking your question um, the way you want it to be asked. Um, so we're, we're going to shift gears because I want to make sure that we have enough time for our um, community comment. And we have six of those, so we will we'll make sure we get there by um, six fifteen here in the next um, five six minutes. Mm -hmm. um, and so, what really what I'm just going to talk about briefly is just kind of where we are and what what we're doing uh, as a group, right? And so, when we think about the work that we're looking into now, it's really important um, in terms of the work that we're doing that you guys have the opportunity to spread awareness, right? To really be engaging with your, uh, your community members, the people you represent, the people you talk to, um, because the, uh, you know, obviously the, the more information that you're able to get from them and share with them, the more people and know, the, the more people know, sorry about that. Um, again, following up to that, we wanna be informing folks of, of what's happening um, and checking in with people because uh, you have your pulse on the communities that you represent. And uh, the reality is, is your entire community won't be on these meetings with us. You will be, and so definitely want to make sure um, that we're that we're getting that information. Uh, we will continue to share information and provide input um, as we look at a you know guiding a, a preferred concept for what this site looks like. And so your voice is really important in that. And then, as always, um, you know really looking through and assessing and synthesizing the feedback um, and looking at how we move this work forward in a way that um, everybody can be proud of and, 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 and feel heard in. Um, next slide, please. Um, last couple of things I'll say, um, you know, again, as, as, we, as we have these conversations, sometimes they might be hard. Sometimes we may have hard questions. Sometimes we may disagree, but as we do that, we want to do that actively. We want to do it constructively and respectfully. Um, and I will do my job to, to keep us on task and, and we'll put in some parking lots and we'll, because there are going to be some questions that come up sometimes that might um, bird walk us a little bit. And so we'll make sure we have a place to capture those so we can uh, stay on task, but also make sure any of those questions come up um, can be addressed and answered and uh, shared out with everybody. Um, I think we kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, we we, we want to try to seek consensus in, in, in what this looks like, recognizing that that may not happen at 100%, but we want to make sure, um, you know, as we look at this uh, part of the work and this part of the vision, um, you know, we we hear and, 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 and incorporate all those, um, all those um, uh, share points that, um, Courtney uh, display, uh, talked about in her presentation. And the, the last thing here is just the reality is, is it's a community, right? And there's differing views. And so there's gonna be some give and take and there's gonna be some compromise. And, and so we wanna make sure that we are, we, we, we're, we're in a place where we got a spirit of grace and, and we can hear and receive and, and actively listen so we can, so we can get those, those things done. Um, there looks like there's two hands raised. Um, I'm going to ask you to either put those questions in the chat or email those to me um, because I want to shift us to our community members who are here and I wanna make sure we have an opportunity to hear from everyone um, who has signed up to be here. And so with that being said, um, uh, we're gonna shift over to our community stuff. And then if there's any questions that can be answered, in the chat um, by Sarah, Laura, or Courtney, please do so. Otherwise, shoot those to me via email and we'll get those answered. Um, for our first commenter, I have Maria Flores. Okay. I'm promoting uh, Maria now, so she'll be able to turn on her microphone and video if she so chooses. All right. Maria, do we have you?
Maria, are you there? I just promoted her. Let's see. There, now I'm unmuted. Okay. okay. All right. Sorry about that. All right. Hey, Maria, how are I'm you? I'm trying to do this on my cell phone. Um, can you hear me? We can mm -hmm. hear you. We can yes. hear you. Yes, you're good to go, and you've got two minutes. The floor is yours. All right. Well, I'll be brief. I was very disappointed that the open space point of view um, on this uh, steering committee has basically been disenfranchised. Uh, Sandy Robnett was no longer able to participate for Save Open Space Denver, and despite the fact that other organizations were able to make substitutions. Um, SOS Denver has been shut out of the conversation. Um, this to me is a bald faced attempt to um, disenfranchise the open space point of view. And uh, we still have a developer representative. We still have Ken Ho for Westside on the committee. So uh, this is not even handed. And um, again, the open space point of view is being shoved down the uh, results of the November 2 election are being ignored. Um, Greater Park Hill RNO did a survey uh, a couple of years ago and 77% of those uh, of the survey of those responding to the survey uh, wanted this land to remain 100% open space. And that includes the uh, Northeast Park Hill area. Statistically valid survey, unlike the push poll that was done by um, RRC for the city. So I'm very disappointed. I'm very upset. Um, this is obviously an attempt to promote development of this property, ignoring the development that's occurring surrounding the property up in the uh, 40th and Colorado uh, commuter rail station. And uh, this process is just getting worse. It's not getting better. So um, I'm hoping that you will hear the open space voice. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Um, next up we have um, Alex Walsh to speak to the committee. Thank you, can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Alex. You have two minutes, sir, the floor is yours. All right, thank you. So uh, what I heard tonight is uh, all voices are equal, but from the sounds of it, it sounds like uh, some are more equal than others. 63% uh, of voter voters in Denver said green space over concrete for this land. That sounds like a prevailing vision to me. State statute says the conservation easement must be upheld unless it's deemed impossible to continue, which it is not. More than 200 affordable housing units are being built in Northeast Park Hill at 38th and Holly which will increase the population of Northeast Park Hill by about 13%. We're already getting more affordable housing, uh, affordable housing here. Many parcels of land surrounding the golf course have been sold to developers to bring more mixed use to the neighborhood. Look it up. A grocery store won't come into the neighborhood as it can't be profitable. They've said this for years and years. There's an active lawsuit against this process as it has not been transparent and is wasting taxpayer dollars. The prevailing vision omits many facts, such as the fact that the conservation easement does allow for additional uses beyond a golf course. The prevailing vision includes data from slanted surveys and includes dis discriminatory pre preferences based on race. This will be challenged. An army of lawyers, residents, and politicians will stand in the way of the corruption and lies that have plagued this process for years. The largest piece of open space left in Denver will not go quietly into the night. You wanna hear from the community? We'll strap in, cause this is not over. The people of this neighborhood, city and state are tired of crony politics destroying what has made this area special. In a hundred years, what will be the legacy? Market rate townhomes or a community amenity for all? I am a resident, property owner and business owner in Northeast Park Hill. I have no financial interest in the development of this land. Committee sitting on this steering committee, they cannot say the same thing. The fight is just beginning. Thank you. Thank you, Alex. Um, next up, we have Harry Doby. Thank you. Um, Harry, the floor is yours. Thanks. I just want to know 
how does this committee reconcile your intentions to create a development plan despite the landslide vote by the people of my neighbors in Northeast Park Hill, as well as all across the city, demanding to preserve the perpetual conservation easement and protect this land from development. As earlier speakers mentioned, it's happening all around this property anyway. So why are we all putting the burden on Park Hill Golf Course land to satisfy needs that can be met and will be met elsewhere, next door, across the street. Why does CPD, Community Planning and Development, continue to pretend that development is the only alternative to a golf course? In March of last year, your own department released a statement clearly admitting that removing the golf use restriction is completely doable. And the attorneys agree because you can modify it as long as it meets the, the conservation purposes. You can't modify or especially update a conservation easement to allow for development. It just can't happen. So why you're pretending to do this is a puzzle. Developers run this city. The fact that this committee even exists in the face of both the perpetual conservation easement and the vote of its citizen rejecting your attempts to develop this land is proof of that. You treat both the people's voice and the conservation easement as mere inconveniences to be minimized in pursuit of your developer client's business interests. How can you ignore the development coming around the Park Hill Golf Course? I just don't get it. This is the prevailing vision. Cool. Thank you, Harry. Uh, next up, we've got Brenda Morrison for the committee. Brenda is, is calling in and she's uh, been asked to unmute. Hi, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Sorry, can you hear me? Hi, mm -hmm. I just have a, sorry, Go thank ahead. you for the, taking my comments. Uh, my name is Brenda Morrison. I live in North Park Hill. I'm a newly elected member of the uh, Greater Park Hill um, board. And I just have a couple quick comments. One is I'm very concerned about the integrity of the public engagement process. From the beginning, I've watched this, and the public engagement needs to, in order to be pure and go with IAP2, and I know that, that the planners know what that means, is that it needs to not have any preordained or predetermined outcomes. And this always did look like there was a predetermined outcome from the beginning, and it's only gotten kind of worse. So I am super concerned, and I encourage you to, um, I'd be happy to talk to you offline about this and my concerns, but I'd encourage you to look at that again. Two, um, I, I'm concerned about a dismissive, dismissive attitude. Um, I, I heard you say you want all voices and all opinions, not just the loudest, and I get that. So then that means people who disagree with you, hoping that uh, we could be constructive in that disagreement, but you, uh, you can't excise people who, who disagree with you. Um, especially not, you know, 63% of the voters. I looked at the, the numbers and many, many of the neighborhoods and precincts around the golf course supported 301. And almost all of them, I don't think there was any that didn't. So that's, that's concerning to me. And, um, and the last thing is I want to echo uh, Maria or Maria is that, um, is that the survey that the Greater Park Hill did, and I did it before I was on the board member, was done by the National Research Center, which is actually a vendor of the city of the Denver who contracted with them for probably 15 years for surveys. So it was a legit input, but was never considered as a legitimate input. And it'd be interesting to go over that survey and take in as critically as you did your own. So thank you very much. I appreciate you doing this. Thank you so much. Um, next up, I have uh, Nancy Young. Yeah, I don't see Nancy Young on the attendee list anymore. I think she was here earlier, but she might have hopped off. So, okay. All right. Well, then we will go to Robert Greer.
Hi, can everybody hear me? Yep, we got you, sir, and you are, the floor is yours. All right, thanks everybody. Um, so I'm Rob, I'm an eviction defense attorney and an affordable housing advocate. Uh, I'm afraid I have to agree with the decision to not give a platform to SOS in these conversations. Uh, I tried repeatedly to get leaders of that organization to read some of the academic literature about the relationship between residential development and urban heat islands, as well as the relationship between that development and displacement, um, both of which is more complex than they would portray. Um, I also tried to get them to read the IPCC report about transit-oriented development, which they had ignored and continue to ignore. Um, instead of reading that literature, it's okay, baby. Um, members of Save Our Open Space uh, repeatedly called me a racist without justification. They mocked my appearance. They accused me of being paid by the developer. And they even publicly revealed details about my family without my consent. So while I'm glad that the prevailing vision includes a commitment to park space and preserving mature trees and even expanding the tree canopy, uh, I can't say that SOS is a good faith conversant in these conversations. Even tonight, we've heard repeated misstatements of fact from SOS defenders, such as that the majority of people polled in the Park Hill survey uh, favored keeping it entirely a golf course or otherwise undeveloped. It's not true, actually, a slight majority uh, in that survey did want some development. Um, the other thing, you know, if you own property in the area, then you have a financial interest in keeping housing supply low so you can continue to reap windfall profits from ever increasing uh, increases in your in your home price. So I don't want to hear people say that uh, that they don't have a financial interest in this when they actually do. Uh, we have an, we have a housing crisis in Colorado. We need you know tens of thousands of more units, especially near transit, um, and we need people who are willing to engage in those conversations in good faith. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Greer. All right. Um, again, want to say thank you to all of the community members who came on to speak to the to the panelists this evening. Thank you for being there uh, to the committee. Um, you know, it's the evening. You've done whatever you've been doing all day in terms of work or family or whatever. And so this is an additional labor of love. And so just want to say thank you for, for being here because you could be anywhere. And so thank you for your service. Um, just a couple of quick things um, for, for your calendar. Our next meeting is uh, February 8th, Tuesday uh, at 5.30. And that meeting is via Zoom. Um, you have access to the website. Definitely take some time and, and go back and um, go over documents if you need to. And um, we will go from there. And then just want to say thank you to the staff uh, for being here and answering questions and make yourself available. And to committee members, again, if you had a question that didn't get answered, please email it to me so I can capture it. It's easier for me to do that than it is with the chat because I've got these multiple screens rolling so I can see everybody. So shoot me an email with that. And again, um, as I started the meeting, you know, hang on to your Christmas decorations, you know, just for a couple more days. Stock show's almost over. Uh, enjoy them. And um, I look forward to uh, continuing this work. And um, and I'm happy to, to be back with you and, and appreciate the opportunity to uh, support your work as you move it forward. Um, with that being said, have a great evening and thank everyone for being here. Thank you. Have a nice weekend, folks. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And we'll try and get some of those additional questions answered. Right, I'm going to uh, stop the recording, stop sharing. All right, cool. Well, have a good evening. Thank you. All right.